I wanna see you again tonight. Hey guys, David Clayton from guitarbreakdown.com. I wanna thank you for stopping by. This is the amazing Phil X. Yeah, yeah! I can't believe he's here and he's screaming. Uh, he's gonna do a bunch of uh, little interview kind of questions. We're gonna have a whole series of this stuff. He's gonna do some playing. We're gonna do some teaching on some of his licks and songs and he's gonna make some of those famous faces. <laughs> and. Uh, Hopefully he's actually going to come back and do this really cool project we're going to do, but we'll talk about that later, a uh, little DVD thing. Uh, hope you guys like it, and we'll be back with the lessons and stuff. I want to clean. Okay, we're going way back. I grew up in uh, Toronto, Canada. So, like, um, but my parents moved around. My dad, my dad was driven like a mofo. So every five years, we had a bigger house. He just worked his ass off. Came to the country, came to Canada from Greece with like a grade six education and had nothing but drive to provide for his family. So by the time I was in high school, we had this huge house with a swimming pool in the back and stuff. It was, you know, it was that kind of thing. So that was in Mississauga. Started in Toronto and slowly got into the outskirts because they thought Toronto was a little crazy. So suburbia and then the city of Mississauga. And then before I moved to LA, I lived in High Park, which is an awesome area in Toronto. And then I moved to California in 97 and began, you know, slowly taking over the world. My dad played bazooki, and he and he was the life of the party. He was the guy. He was the guy that would show up at a party with his bazooki, and get everybody singing, and go till like five o'clock in the morning. And uh, he he was just that guy. So um, I grew up witnessing that, and I thought, man, I, I I could be that guy. And I he was the one that put a guitar in my hands when I was five. So I'm sure he wanted a rhythm guitar player. You know, I need, I need accompaniment. You're five, play guitar. You know, that kind of thing. I'll play bazooki. But it's funny, when it, he wanted me to play bazooki more than I wanted me to play bazooki. So when I was 11, I took some lessons. And uh, because he wanted me to play, I wasn't into it. But when I was 16, 17, and realizing that I wasn't going to get anywhere sounding like my heroes and I had to do something different and I had to, had to be inventive and what would give me an edge. I was like, hey, dad, I should take bazooki lessons again. And he goes, sure, man, I'll pay for it. So I went and took bazooki lessons and it, it gave me this picking edge that nobody else had. It's just because there's no room for error with bazooki. There's no distortion. There's no cranked amplifiers. You're just, it's you and, and it's, it's like, trying to shred on a 12 string because the strings are paired off, right? So there's eight instead of 12, and, but the neck, you can really shred on the neck, but it's, it's really bizarre. But I started picking and everybody in my band was like, dude, what, what happened to your picking? It's crazy. I go, I started playing bazooki. And uh, that, that's the secret, man. That's my secret. For me, the motivation to move to California, uh, and specifically Los Angeles, was it just seemed the place where everything happens. Um, you learn, you know, you learn a lot. You learn what works, what doesn't work. I mean, now the way the internet has exploded so much since, it's almost like you could be anywhere on the planet, and if you do make the right steps uh, towards your goals, as long as your goals aren't making money, if your goals are making music and expressing yourself you could accomplish a lot. Money is just a bonus. Um, for me, it was just that when I moved here, first of all, I was Canadian. So I had to work, you know, digging ditches, delivering meat, 
whatever it took. And I had a visa. What the visa does is it allows you to work as a as an American in the U.S. So and then the visa graduated to green card status. So that's what I have now. But the the funny thing was that I was working one of these jobs when I was kind of like how you say discovered, you know. So I'm painting a garage of a producer who's working on a Tommy Lee record, Methods of Mayhem, 1999, and they need a guitar player. And I'm like, well, I play guitar. And Scott, producer Scott Humphrey, he goes uh, to Tommy, hey, let's get Phil to play guitar. And Tommy's like, dude, the guy pen in the garage? And I've told this story a million times. You probably, this is the eighth time on the internet. Uh, but it's, it's, it, it's always funny. What I don't elaborate on is when I toured the UK with, with Powder, my other band, my old band, um, 2003, we got interviewed by Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden on the BBC. And he asked me how I met Tommy Lee, and I told him the story. And after, I mean, I've told the story a million times. He was the only guy, Bruce Dickinson, singer, pilot, dual guy. <laughs> um, he goes, because I started working on the record, and he's like, did you ever finish painting in the garage? And I'm like, uh, good question. Yeah, actually. So it was kind of it was kind of cool, man. And I was always I went to like a million Iron Maiden concerts when I was a kid, so that was a, that was a huge, cool thing. So uh, yeah, um, but then it just wrote, snowballed, you know. I was, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm going forward. So Tommy and then uh, the same, same producer Scott produced uh, the next Rob Zombie record, and Rob actually came up to me and said, "Hey, I love what you're doing on Tommy's record. Would love you to play on mine." And then the next week, Rob's like, hey, man, did Alice call you? And I'm like, Alice who? And he said, Alice Cooper. I gave him your number on the golf course last week. So then I'm playing on a, an Alice Cooper record. And then and then another, so this is one stream happening with Scott Humphrey and all those people. And then down this, now I'm getting a call from, hey, man, um, I remember you played on the first Art of Lady, Lady Peace record. Do you want to play on this Avril Lavigne record that we're producing some songs for? And then that turned into Kelly Clarkson. And then that turned into... Daughtry and it just it just grows into this huge thing and I thought you know what my bands don't make shit but sessions pay awesome <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing this so that's basically what went down I wanna see you again tonight.